In this action thriller, you play the part of Sketch, a highly respected comic book artist who, by a strange twist of fate, gets sucked into his own comic book creation. Stuck in a familiar world, you must become the hero, fighting against the very villains of your own imagination. If Sketch can first stop one of his evil characters from taking over the world, surely he'll be able to find a way out of the real world. Whatever that means. Well, for the most part, the manual actually wrote something right for once. Comic Zone is a beat-em-up game starring comic book artist Sketch Turner. Whose name sounds a little sketchy. <laughs> who gets sucked into his own comic along with his pet rat Roadkill by one of his own creations during a thunderstorm, which brought him to light. Kind of like Frankenstein's monster, except not. Why and how could this happen makes no sense, but what Sketch does know is that he has to get out, and that's where we come in. Wait, what? Oh, not in the common zone. You know where that puts us? In the danger zone? Anyways, I'm out of here. I'll help you off screen. So yeah, it's a beat-em-up game set in a Sketch Turner comic, which looks pretty rad for graphics, with item and weapon pickups that you'd use on your six-button Genesis controller. Uh, yeah, this game was meant to be played with a six-button controller, but you are not screwed if you have a three-button controller, as you can still use that to play. Small puzzle-solving segments, and of course fighting your way through enemies, and when you've cleared out an area, you go to the next panel. And by panels, I'm not talking about the River City Gamers panel at Con Bravo at 6pm on Friday. That was a joke. Mostly. Each panel has something you have to do, which is mostly beating up enemies and sometimes solving simple puzzles depending on which path you take. There are a few points in the game where you can choose where the next panel is going to, which either makes the game easier or harder for you. But they don't really make too many good uses of it and it's just a small detour to get to the end where you move to the next page or fight a boss at the end. But I'm gonna have to come clean about this. I really can't think of anything else to say about this game, and you know why that is? Because this game is ass! And by that, I mean it kicks your fudging ass! This game is hard as fudging nails! I can't beat this game, why? Well, you only get one life in this game, and if you happen to die from anything like running out of health or accidentally falling into a hole, it's game over and you have to start the game all over again. No continues whatsoever. Well, you do get an extra life if you manage to make it to the second episode, which is like, oh, thank fudging goodness, I can breathe again. But even then, it's a small consolation, because instead of spawning where you died, you restart the page, and the more I tried to beat it, the more I started to hate the game. This game, it's just punishing to the core! And one of the reasons why it's so hard is because you lose health when you hit objects. Why would you do that?! I mean, it just makes it harder for no reason other than to just be harder! Fuck you, Sketch Turner! And no, you can't avoid destroying objects in the game because they block your way to the next panel if you don't clear them out. But you're not necessarily forced to hit them if you've got dynamite or something else to destroy them, but still. And then there are these flying fuckers who just come out and piss me the hell off and they can knock you into the pits too, the fuckers. How are you supposed to survive on one health bar? I mean, sure, there's iced tea that you can find that I thought were medicine bottles that heal you, but there's like only like one in each level, and they only recover half your health. Well, thankfully, when you reach a new episode, you do get your health back, so thank goodness for that. And also, if you didn't know this, your pet rat Roadkill can actually rip parts of the panel up to reveal secrets like iced tea and weapons, and in addition to that, help you fight enemies by zapping them. You mean like Pikachu from Pokemon? Which I didn't know until I read about it and watched a TSA video, but sometimes he gets in the way what I'm fighting, that little fucker. I'm just wondering how I'm gonna survive the other episodes. I mean, I already have enough trouble making it to episode two! I mean, what about all the other episodes from uh, three and onwards? I mean, that's why you have 20 music tracks in your jukebox, right? <laughs> wait, what? I'm wrong? Oh wait, maybe it's like 10 episodes or somewhere around there. I mean, that's a pretty reasonable length to expect from a game, right? What? How many episodes are in this game? There's only three episodes in this game, dude. Wait, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, man, three episodes, two levels each. 
Wow, this game sure came up short. Wait, is the reason why it's so fudging hard is to pad it out? Probably the case, man. Well, that's the other reason why it's so difficult to talk about this game. It's embarrassingly short. Which I think uh, uh, we know what to suggest for this game. And let me be honest, I heard about this game like many times about how cool and retro it is, and I was somewhat excited to play it since it was what some people called a gem, but when I discovered how short and absurdly difficult it is, I was disappointed. I was expecting better, and I was expecting more. But no! I got fed up with this game. I'd rather play Shaycon the Forever Man, which I never expected to say, and especially so soon. At least I made progress as slow and agonizing and crippled as it was. Now, despite the game being as hard as bowling balls and shorter than the hairs of an angry bald man, I still say Comic Zone is something, at the very least, is something you should check out. Check it out! And see whether you can tolerate the absurd difficulty or not. My guess is not. I mean, the art style of the game done in a comic illustration and the animation is really neat. The music I didn't think was that great may appeal to some of you. Beating up enemies is satisfying if it goes well. It has a few secrets that are pretty neat to find out. The game has ideas and is definitely an interesting experience to play through at least once, even if you won't finish it. And if you must beat the game, there are cheat codes in this game like invincibility or the level select, which is laughable, but thank goodness for that. It's just that it has a big shortcoming with its length. <laughs> oh my. Well, this game was released in 1995, which is pretty late because around this time, the Sega Genesis is about to be discontinued, so it's no surprise that at the time no one really heard much about it. Meanwhile, PlayStation and the Sega Saturn was coming out, so that made it even more unnoticed until much later. So not only did this game have a shortcoming, it had a late coming to it as well. Bye, oh my. But there is still a small fan base for it, kind of like with Shea Kong, the Forever Man, which I did a quickie on with Ultra J-Man that you can check out. And with Comic Zone, you can pretty much find the game anywhere now and play it, like on the Virtual Console or Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. So this is WizWorld 100, you're the viewers and I'm the reviewers, so stay tuned for more, and go check out some Comic Zone, and watch out for the Danger Zone. By the way, there's two endings to this game. Sega Genesis that I got when I was in America. That's why I'm gonna go take a look at the puzzle games on the Sega Genesis, columns one and three. Build. What the fuck? Am I crazy for not liking this game? Because the more I tried to beat it, the more I started to hate it.